Hello, um, ladies and gentlemen, good evening to you and a warm welcome to Majesty Christian TV Network. My name is Apostle Larry Dorkano and it's my joy to be coming your way today. Shall we pray? Father God, we honor you and we trust in your mercies, your power, your greatness. And we have resigned ourselves unto you, asking that you will lead and direct our ways that our lives shall be profitable. Thank you for all you have done, for how far you brought us, and we are trusting you to do even much more. Be glorified is our touch, my lips, and let me speak the word of life to bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, once again, I want to thank you for tuning in, and it's my prayer that the next few moments we're going to uh, spend together will be profitable. I would like to conclude the message that began uh, a few weeks back, uh, titled, uh, Give Honor to Whom Honor is Due. Uh, I had expected to, I had intentions of, you know, actually finishing the message uh, well. Uh, so I'm going to try to do that uh, in the next few moments. Please, let's turn once again to our, our main text, which is uh, Romans chapter um, 13, the verse 7. Romans chapter 13, the verse 7, which says, Render therefore unto all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute is um, due. Custom to whom custom. Fear to whom fear. Honor to whom honor. Hallelujah. So this is the word of God saying, Give unto everyone according to what he or she deserves. And uh, I recall I also uh, shared with us uh, a passage or a, verse, a piece of scripture from Psalm 8, verse 5. Psalm 8, the verse 5 says, um, You made him, him referring to man, made him a little lower than heavenly beings, and crowned him with glory and honor. So clearly this scripture is referring to the fact that when God created us, He put already upon our lives, upon our heads, a crown. And the crown is a crown of glory and also of honor. Now, when people have crowns, they are crowned for different things. For example, uh, there are people who are crowned to be rulers of certain areas or certain localities. Um, but God, in this case, has crowned us so that we carry honor upon our heads. We carry favor upon our heads. We carry glory upon our heads. That means nobody is supposed to dishonor you because you carry a crown upon us. Say, I hear you. And then I spoke briefly about the fact that, um, that although we have honor upon our lives, yet the honor which we have uh, or shall I say, the honor which some people have has developed some problems. And so, there are people who are called honorables with issues. And I gave an example of one man who was honorable and yet had an issue. And the man was called Jabez uh, from uh, uh, First Chronicles chapter 4, the verses 9 and 10. We saw that he was born, uh, but... Uh, he had an issue with him in his life. And that was an issue of dishonor. Uh, 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 the Bible says that he was more honorable than his, bro his brothers, but, but there was something wrong with him. Uh, he had a name, and that name, which meant pain, constantly contested with the honor, the greater honor which was, he was supposed to have. And so he had to look for a solution. And he had to turn to God eventually, for the solution. Now, the point, I want to just establish that very point by mentioning another person, another great man, another honorable man who had an issue, who had an issue with his honor. He was an honorable person, but had an issue. Now, shall we then turn to um, first, Second Kings, Second Kings uh, chapter 5. And it's uh, the story of a man, a great general called Naaman. Naaman, hallelujah. Now, the Bible says, Now Naaman was the commander of the army 
of the king of Aram or of Syria. Uh, he was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded. That means he was highly respected. Okay? Because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram or Syria. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. So, all the greatness around him had been tainted by one thing. And that thing was that he had leprosy. And that, this, that thing which tainted the honor, or which was an issue in, uh, in the honor or on the honor in his life, really bothered him. And bothered those who loved and cared for him. And so that sort of, that must have brought some limitations and, 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 and hindered him from, from enjoying the fullness of the honor which uh, was due unto him. I mean, being a, a hero, being a fighter, loved by the king, loved by the people, because he was a, he was a great warrior. I mean, he ought to be celebrated every day. I mean, he, he, they, was, they celebrated him, but there was still an issue. People would talk and, and recite all the victories and all the honors he's brought, but they said, but this man had leprosy. Even the enemies he defeated would even taunt him and say, well, this man is great, yes, but he had leprosy. So that was the issue with the honor upon his life. Now, there are many people today who have also issues in their lives, although God has crowned them with honor. And for that reason, uh, it is important that we turn back to God who uh, put the honor in our lives in the first place. So it is important that we turn back to God who gave the honor. Now, it is very interesting that Naaman, who had been honored by, who had, great, had done great things and was highly regarded uh, and yet had leprosy on his body, it's so remarkable that he found the key to solving the problem he had. And the key was to turn to God. The key was to go to the, his own maker. Hallelujah. So that encounter is the same I want to recommend to you who is watching now, who is listening to me. Because if you turn somewhere else, if you turn to somebody else, if you go to another location, to another whoever, to seek a restoration of the honor, you might not, you might get disappointed or you might not get it well fixed. Hallelujah. I, I, I can guarantee the fact that Naaman must have tried a lot of local uh, doctors and specialists and who, what have you, you know, both far and near, in the bid to redeem the fullness of the honor that was befitting to him. But he didn't succeed until he turned to the God of Israel. I want to recommend to you, whatever is happening in your life, every situation that you may be facing right now, I want to challenge you. I want to, I want to speak to you. I want to, I want to urge you, go nowhere else but turn to God. Now, if you have found out that people don't respect you, they don't treat you uh, with the respect and the honor that you deserve, you find out that the work you do and the things that you do are not regarded well, although you give it your best and you know that it's supposed to be celebrated, but somehow it doesn't get the appropriate acknowledgement. Let me tell you, you may, have, you may be an honorable with an issue. You may be an honorable with an issue. And this is where we need to get a problem fixed so that the honor upon your life can shine through powerfully. Say, I hear you. And so, you got to redeem that honor. In fact, I like what Naaman did. It was just via via, you know, through some, you know, on the spider corners, and he just the head that there was a prophet in Israel who could heal and cleanse him of the leprosy. And quickly they took advantage and they and they honored. I mean, they, they just went for it and gave it a try. Why don't you give the God of Israel a trial to see if he would not restore the honor that has been battered, damaged, and destroyed in your life? God is able. To do office. It doesn't matter what has happened. You know, sometimes we can get so discouraged because of setbacks and failures and disappointments that sometimes we even have a hard time. 
you know, going to the house of God. But let me tell you, when you turn to God, when you go to the house of God, when you come to church, remember first and foremost, you are coming to God Almighty. Don't take it as, like a social uh, setting whereby you are gathering to fellowship and to connect with friends. No, no, no. You are missing the point. You set your heart and your mind to go to your Creator, the one who can redeem and restore your honor to the full. Say, I hear you. So eventually, uh, Naaman, uh, the, the Syrian commander, ended up in Israel and he met the prophet Elisha, uh, who told him to go wash in the Jordan seven times. And after he washed, he came out and to his amazement, he was restored. Hallelujah. So whatever issue is affecting or limiting or defiling or staining or, you know, causing your honor not to, to be celebrated, then I want to tell you that you can turn to the God of Israel. Say, I hear you. The time has come for you oh, to, to be restored quickly. I pray that it shall be so with you without any delay, without any delay. Now, very quickly, the scriptures gives us uh, some idea about what honor can do for us. And I believe I shared that before earlier on. But let me just quickly go over uh, what uh, the scriptures tells us. In, in Isaiah chapter 43, Isaiah 43, it tells us from the verse, uh, let me take it from the verse 3. It says, it says, it says for I am... The Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, I gave Egypt for your ransom. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Sheba in your stead, since you were precious and honored in my sight. And because I love you, I will give men in exchange for you and people in exchange for your life. Think of it. God who created me, created you, said he had crowned you. He crowned you from the beginning. Before you became who you are today, he had already put the crown of glory and honor upon you. And then, along the line, suddenly you lost the honor, you lost the glory. You lost that respect and you lost that, that prestige which you were supposed to be walking in. God is saying, because he loves you, because he cares about you. He said he will what? Redeem you. He said, since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I've loved you, I will give men. So people will be exchanged for you. If you go somewhere and there's a plot some, for danger to happen, the Bible says because you carry divine honor, God will deliver you. He will make sure that your life is spared. If something bad, God forbid, but if something bad is meant to happen, has been scheduled to happen because of you, because you are honorable and honored in His sight, God says He will give man's life in exchange for yours. Isn't that awesome? So what does honor do? Honor gives God the honor which God has placed upon us gives Him the chance to spare our lives, to redeem us, to get us out of trouble. It doesn't matter what kind of trouble you are facing today. God says, because I already have put honor upon your life, if should anything want to go wrong with you or against you, I am ready to exchange other people's life for you. Isn't that awesome? That means the honor which God has placed upon you and upon me is great. It's a highly, highly valuable honor. And for that sake, for the sake of that alone, God will deliver you at all costs. Say at all costs. God will deliver me. Hallelujah. Let's read further. It says, um, um, verse 6, it says, I will say to the north, give them up. I will say to the south, do not hold back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. So clearly, God has placed a special tag upon the honor that is upon your life. That God wants to, God is prepared to redeem you. Has, have you seen how powerful honor is? 
Because you are honorable in the sight of God. Is that because you are honored in my sight? Hallelujah. It's not only men who must honor you. God himself said, I have placed on my honor upon you and therefore I respect that honor. You are an untouchable. Nobody has to harm you. If something is about to go wrong, I am prepared to intervene and to eject you out of the danger zone before it's too late. That's the power of divine honor. Hallelujah. So that is just to give you an idea of what the honor will do in your very life. Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to end here uh, for now. I will be continuing later. Uh, I'm a bit pressed for time. I've, I've, excuse me for that. But let it be known to you that like the scripture says, it says, give honor to whom honor is due. Tribute to whom it is due. Custom to whom it is due. If God himself can respect the honor upon you and myself, then men also are required. And so you will get the honor that belongs to you in Jesus' name. And Father, thank you for your word and let it settle with us and let it release transformation in our lives that we may enter the fullness of the grace and glory and blessings that are due unto us. Thank you for hearing this prayer in Jesus' name. I love you and I look forward to be with you again next week, same time, right here on Majesty Christian TV Network. And if by any chance you're looking for a place of worship, please call me. The number is on the screen. Call me.